So what we're going to do today is learn how to shim a gearbox properly. It's something that's uh, it's a question that's very often asked and very often explained, but in text, and it's a hard thing to do in text. Now uh, we're going to be working with the JG gearbox uh, that we were working with earlier. That's all stock. You can see we have both halves of the shell. They've been cleaned up a bit, and we have all three of the gears also cleaned up, and we have the six metal bushings that are six millimeters that go with the shell and then we have lots of shims so let me show you first of all what we don't want let's just slap these in here and yeah I've had I've already gone through and made sure that there are no old shims just left on these when I was cleaning them Now, if you were to reassemble the gearbox like this, it would probably run, except for this one's awfully low. But the problem is that you'd have quite a bit of unnecessary friction, and there's a lot of play in all of these. They're just wobbling all over the place, up and down on their axles. And you'd be a lot, not only would the gearbox be pretty loud, the undue stress on the uh, motor because of all that extra friction and have to put more energy into it to move these but you're a lot more likely to uh, lose some teeth sooner so what we want to do is shim it up so that all these teeth are meshing just perfectly so let me illustrate what I mean by just perfectly okay so this is the sector gear and the spur gear and they mesh right here now what we want to do when we shim them of course shims are these little slivers of metal that sit up here, I'll show you. They sit on the axles and they determine where they rest in relation to one another and in relation to the gearbox. So what we don't want is this right here. This is bad. If they sit like this, you see there's minimal contact to the surface area of the teeth. So that means that all the force is put into just the amount of teeth that's touching. We've got all this extra wasted part that we can use to, uh, to transfer that energy. So what we want is them to sit like this, with just a hair of space between them so that this isn't rubbing on the top of that, because that's excess friction. Again, we're trying to avoid as much friction as possible. So we want them as flush as possible so that all the surface area of the teeth is touching, but with just a hair of space so that they're not rubbing on these surfaces unnecessarily. So we want the same thing between the bevel gear and the spur gear here. What we don't want is this. You put this in here, yeah, the gearbox will run, but again, all of that energy is being transferred through just half of the surface area of the teeth, just the tips of them. So you're going to uh, lose a gear, lose teeth on these gears, much sooner rather than later. So what we want is all that surface area to be contacting each other so that that energy is spread evenly through the teeth. Now we don't want we don't want this to be pushing down on this on the uh, spur gear because again that's excess friction. So we want we want just a little hair there, and so that we've got maximum contact but minimum friction. The other thing that you want to do is make sure that the contact between the pinion gear on the motor and the bot and the top teeth of the bevel gear is ideal. By ideal, I mean the same thing I meant with the other gears, which is that we have maximum surface area contact with the teeth so that if they were sitting if they were sitting like this, where they're barely touching, just the tops of the teeth are touching, you're going to strip something out a lot sooner rather than if they're flush and sitting in there and they can grab the entire surface of the tooth. But by the same token, we don't want undue friction by the bevel gear being shimmed so low that it's pushing down on this axle and causing extra friction, extra wear on stuff. One other thing that we want to make sure we do is these teeth here. You don't want the sector gear to be shimmed so high that it's making minimal contact with the teeth on the piston. Now it's rarely going to be 
down here just because of how it sits. It's usually going to be somewhere right around in here, but what I'm saying you don't want to do is have the sector gear shimmed up like this, where it's barely grabbing onto those piston teeth because, again, you're going to strip out that sooner rather than later when you've got minimal surface area contact like that. So we want to keep it further down there. Uh, the other thing about the sector gear where you don't want it to be too high is, again, this makes contact with the cutoff lever. So if it's sitting up too high this way, then it's going to be making barely any contact with the cutoff lever, and that might cause problems with your semi-auto. You can see right here. This is going to be flush with the gearbox no matter what. This doesn't move. So if the sector gear is shimmed up really high, then you might have barely any part of the cutoff lever acting on the sector gear, which can cause problems. So that's why we never want to get the sector gear too high up because it can ha cause both of those issues. So now let's get started with the actual shimming. I always do the bottoms first, meaning shim the gears on the uh, left half of the shell. Then I put what's necessary on the top to keep them uh, lined up the way I want them to. So we'll start with the spur here. You hear that sound? Kind of a scraping sound because we don't have anything lifting it up off that shell and it's just kind of rubbing on the shell. We don't want that to happen so normally what I'll do is I'll start with one fairly medium width shim right there. Now you hear that? It's no longer rubbing on the gearbox once it starts spinning. So we're gonna assume that's good and go from there. Obviously we can move it up later on, but we don't want to go down from there because then we'll just be rubbing on the shell. Okay, now let's see how the bevel seems to match up with that. It's a difficult thing to see. You might have to look from a couple different angles. But right now, we have pretty optimum contact between the teeth on the bevel and the teeth on the spur. See, all the teeth are meshing, almost their whole surface area is meshing, but we don't have anything scraping on each other unnecessarily. So we're going to say those two are pretty good to go. So now, and of course that was, you'll see this bushing is actually up a little bit high. So that kind of helped us there, negated the use of a shim on the bottom of the bevel. So we'll set that to the side there, and now we'll do the spur to the sector. And it looks like we're getting pretty lucky with this shim job. Uh, there's pretty optimal contact there. It's a bit difficult to see, but this is something that's kind of hard to, to show at just the right angle. Now, it might be a little close. It might be rubbing on there, but we'll find out in just a minute. Right now, we're going to assume this is pretty good. So we've got our bottoms done, and uh, we were fortunate enough to only have to put one shim on this, but... Every gear set is different, every bushing is different, every shell is different, every gear is different. That's why shims exist in the first place, to correct those little discrepancies in manufacturing. So now what we need to do is shim the tops of them. And here's the reason why. We know this is sitting where I want it to, on the bottom, as far as meshing with the other gears, but what happens when I just slap this on here? It can go can go up and down. It can fly pretty much all over the place. We don't want that. We want it to sit exactly where we had it. So, as you can see, there was quite a bit of play. So I'm going to go ahead and add a fairly large shim to that, a fairly thick shim, or two. And now we'll see how that tightens it up. 
And it's very important not to get them too tight because then you've got a ton of excess friction. If you just slap on a bunch of shims there and you tighten it up real tight with the shell, well, it's not gonna be spinning freely. And that defeats the purpose. Badly shimming something can be just as bad or worse than not shimming anything at all. So now we've got a lot less play, but still more than I'd prefer. So we'll add one more smaller shim. And by size, when I talk about size, I'm talking about the actual width of the shim itself. They come in various sizes. It's still spinning freely, but there's almost no play up and down. You want the tiniest bit of play up and down, the tiniest bit. And the reason why is because A, you don't want that excess friction, and B, you do need a little bit of room for there to be lubrication in there between the metal parts. But it's still spinning freely, but again, lack of play, so that's about where we want it. But we're going to do a final test on that, just to be 100% certain it's not too tight later on. So now we've got our spur gear shimmed exactly the way we want, so we're going to take out that whole assembly because we don't want to misplace those shims and we want to keep it with the same bushing. So we'll pop out that bushing. So we've still got the same shims on the top. We're going to put that shim back the way we found it here. We're going to set this all to the side because it's exactly the way we want it, so let's keep it that way. And now with this bushing, with this bushing on the bottom of the bevel, we were doing pretty well. So let's see what we need to do to the top of it. Once again, lots of up and down play there. And purpose for this shimming the top of it is, again, if you remember earlier, we want this. We don't want this. If there's no shims on the top, as soon as it start spinning it could easily go up to here. So that's why we have to shim both the top and the bottom of the axle to keep it precisely where we want it. Had a good deal of play so I'm going to put a couple shims on here and see where we are. Free spin. Up and down play is very minimal. Let me see if I can swap one of these thinner shims for one that's slightly thicker. I like it to be a little tighter, but just a tiny bit. You can see sometimes it's hard to get shims off once they're already on there because they're so thin. So sometimes what I'll do is take a little razor blade and slide it up underneath of it to get it right off there. So I'd say this is a fairly medium shim. This one's real thin. Let's find another medium one like that and we should be right where we want to be. If you put one on there that was a bit too thick, or you put a few too many on there, it'd be tight. So then you'd want to back it off, go with one a little thinner, or remove one altogether. This has almost no play now, but it's still free spinning, so it looks like that's exactly how we want that bevel gear. So again, we'll do the same thing. We'll set it to the side with the same bushings and the shims left on, so that we'll be able to put it back in exactly the way we want it. And now we'll go over to the sector gear. Again, this one didn't seem to need any on the bottom, 
let's see how we sit without any on the top. We're sitting real low. You can see lots of pressure, I mean lots of uh, movement there. So again we're going to need to do some shimming on the top. And once again, what happens if I don't put any shims on the top and just let this ride? Well, again, this sector gear could go up like that once it's in there. And again, that's exactly what we're trying to avoid, and that's the whole purpose of shimming. So let's see how close we got it. Mm, still a good bit of play there. Let's toss on another one. Still a little bit, a little bit too much. Let's put a thin one on there. This one's pretty thin. All right, almost no play. Spinning easily. Got that one where we want it. Now, here comes the important part. Making sure they all work together. So we'll put that spur gear back, still with all the shims from earlier, and we'll put the bevel gear in there, and then we'll put the sector in. Now it's not going to be quiet because they're sliding on each other, but there's a, there's a different sound when it's scraping on a shell or or if their spur and sector are scraping together, that's a different sound from the sound of teeth moving on each other. So you want to listen for that. As you spin it. Now if these were ball bearing bushings, you could just spin the sector gear and they'd all just keep going for a little bit. But these are bushings, so you've got you've naturally got more friction. process of elimination. Let's take out the bevel gear and see if we still have that sound. Still do have a little bit of that sound. Okay, it's not the spur gear on the shell. probably the sector gear on the spur gear there. So just to move it up a hair, let's take the... Now remember, this is an absolute distance. The distance between the bottom of the shell and the top of the shell is an absolute distance. So if I add a shim to the bottom and I leave the shims on the top the same, that means we're going to be too tight. But if I take a shim off the top and move it to the bottom, that means that the whole gear moves up a tiny bit, but we're still uh, properly spaced between the two shell halves. And since I don't want to go up very much, I only want to go up a tiny bit, I'm going to take the thinnest shim that was on the top and move it to the bottom. So this will move the whole sector gear up a bit and should alleviate that problem of it rubbing. Oh, actually I have everything backwards. Hold on. There we go. And that should move it up and alleviate that uh, rubbing on the spur gear. So let's find out if it did. And when you do this, you don't want to just hold the two halves together. You actually want to squeeze a bit on the edges um, because it is going to be tight like that. All I hear now is teeth moving on each other. I don't hear that scraping. So I think we're good to go, but let's do a little visual inspection. It's kind of a hard thing to see. 
especially from the angle that cameras can see it, but if you look down in there, you can see that we still got plenty of surface area contact on those teeth. So I believe we have it ideally shimmed, but there's one last test to make sure. This test involves exactly what we did earlier, but with the addition of a couple screws. The reason for this being that how tight you hold it is probably not how tight the screws are going to hold it. So we're just going to put in a few here, just these two here, that one, that one, and one of the ones up top. And once we torque those down, it should be about as tight as it's going to be uh, when you actually reassemble the gearbox. Alright, so now we have those screws tightened down, so this gearbox is tight like it's going to be when it's done, and we'll do the same test we did earlier. Alright, I've got a noticeable amount of friction there, so that means we did something too tight, and that's exactly why we did that test, to prevent us from doing that. So we're going to have to remove a shim from the top of at least one of them. You want to make sure you keep the shims where you had them. If you lose your place, you might have to start over. So let's squeeze this good and tight and see if maybe this was the one giving us that friction. I don't think it was. Alright, so let's see if it's the sector gear. Doing this may take some time. You've seen we've spent a while shimming these gears, but it's well worth it in the long run. All right, this sector is not the problem. And usually you're not going to have to do this where you have to torque it down for each individual gear to figure out which one is just a bit too tight. but what you didn't see earlier is the time I spent cleaning all these parts and uh, of course I did remove everything in the gearbox. You don't have to do that to shim uh, correctly but I find that uh, it's best to start with a clean gearbox, uh, just the shell and the gears, the shims and bushings and nothing else so I can make sure that it's perfectly shimmed before I do anything else with it. And then once you've got that done, then you can go about the rest of your tasks. Uh, once you, when you leave stuff and you know don't remove everything out of the shells, they're harder to get cleaned up, and it's also more cumbersome to try to shim it because you just have stuff getting in the way. Excess resistance there. Let's tighten up these sides just to make sure it's not the bevel gear. Mm 
Scoop. It is. Bevel gear is just a little bit too tight. So we will want to loosen that up a bit. So we're going to take one of these kind of thicker shims and swap it out for a slightly thinner one. So that should bring us just perfectly in, the, in line with where we want to be on that bevel. But since we've already done it with the other two, let's torque down the spur just to make sure that wasn't also a little bit too tight itself. see the funk in on this Torx. It was in one of these, but I wanted to be able to free spin it really quickly, so I just took them all out of it. just the, the tiniest bit tighter than I want it to be. So we're going to back off on that one too. So the combined just tiny bit of tightness on the spur and tiny bit of tightness on the bevel is what was giving us that resistance earlier when we were when we had uh, closed up the shell to see how well the whole set was spinning. remove the one on the bottom because that would mess up the alignment with the sector gear. So to get it a little looser, whoop, we're going to, we've got several shims in there. Let's go replace this one here, which is a medium thickness, with one that's pretty thin. that should give us exactly what we want on the spur gear. Alright, so let's put everything back in and do a final check to make sure we have this shimmed up right. 
excellent. Now all we've got is teeth rubbing on each other. Obviously the axles rub on the uh, bushings as well, but I don't feel any undue resistance uh, from the shell or from the gears rubbing on each other's surfaces. So that's exactly what we want. And of course we'll test to make sure nothing's wobbling up and down too much on the axles. The bevel isn't quite as tight as I'd like it to be. It's a, got a hair a bit too much wobble, but unfortunately once we, if we were to add another small shim, it would make it just a teensy bit too tight. So I'd rather go with just a teensy bit uh, looser than I'd prefer than a tiny bit too tight.